In Britain, the problems are all to do with the weather, as usual. The Open Championship starts with a national breakdown rally, where David Llewellyn surprises the establishment by fighting for the lead in his RED-prepared Metro. His chief rival, the wily Hanu Mikkele, bidding for his fourth win on this event with a 500-horsepower Audi Sport Quattro. Llewellyn ignores his 100-horsepower deficit and the chaos as snow threatens to stop the rally. He's just behind Mikkele. Well, I think it's 12 or 15 seconds, but uh, apparently there's one of the stages in the night's been cancelled where I took 19 seconds off him. So if that's correct, that puts us 30 seconds behind him, which is not so good. Making his first appearance, Jimmy McRae in the Rothmans Metro. The battle between the Welshman and the Finn continues unabated. The car's gone very well. Um, we haven't had any problems at all, and I mean that honestly. We haven't had any problems except me knocking every corner off it, I think, <laughs> and the snowbanks. Uh, and the conditions have been awful. Um, you know, running on these, these sort of roads without spikes in the tyres is very difficult. But of course, this year is um, the strongest competition, I think, in the championship for many years. Um, with, you know, sort of four manufacturers with a super supercars in. So um, it'll be very difficult. And if we can get some good points on the board now, uh, it'll be a good start. Night falls, and the battle really intensifies. Michael Sundstrom crashes his Peugeot 205 Turbo 16 out of the lead. Llewellyn beats Mikolo by 26 seconds to take the lead before the last stage. Then Mikolo beats Llewellyn on the final stage by, yes, 26 seconds. So Mikolo wins the rally by 16 seconds. Everyone else finishes nine minutes or more behind Llewellyn. With no snow and no Mikolo, Llewellyn starts the all-tarmac circuit of Ireland totally confident. Jimmy McRae has won this event several times. He leads in the Rothmans Metro. The rally develops into a tussle between McRae and Llewellyn until the Scotsman suffers suspension failure and retires. David Llewellyn scores the first international rally victory for himself and for the Metro 6R4. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Can you ask me how you feel? <laughs> Over the moon. Just a bit. Fantastic feeling. Well, what's it mean to you, this win? Well, it's um, my first international win. And on such a classic event as this, uh, it's just too good for words, really. And, of course, it's the first international win for the Metro as well. So it's, uh, it's uh, all good stuff. Enjoy it while you can, David. The Welsh Rally brings only bad luck. Although the strength of the Metro allows it to be driven away from this one, even with only three wheels working, the next roll finishes the job. With the cars shattered, Llewellyn must watch as his home rally is won by Mikola, with McRae only 20 seconds behind. It's a real boost to Jimmy's confidence as the Open Championship moves to Scotland. team appear in Scotland in search of rough road testing. A quirk in the international regulations forces Malcolm Wilson to start the rally down at number 17, where he's often to drive through the dust of slower cars, a fact which soon proved very important. Nevertheless, Wilson totally dominates the first half of this important European Championship rally. For a while, Metro's even hold four of the first five places, with Wilson leading from Jimmy McRae. We were doing this rally with Malcolm to try out all the things that we wanted for rallies like the Acropolis, which we decided not to do. And obviously we're very delighted. I mean, for Malcolm to be leading so convincingly from start to the halfway point, the car obviously goes very well. We hardly put a spanner on it during the event. We had one or two minor brake problems where stones got in and uh, attacked the braking system. But uh, apart from that, the car has gone like a rocket the whole way. 
This far from rocket-like performance by David Llewellyn spells trouble for the metros. Even at this speed, the dust is incredible, and it's getting inside the metro engine. Llewellyn retires soon after this, but he's joined on the casualty list by most of the other metros.